to. Uh, but research, research shows that failure is a necessary ingredient of success. A, a study conducted by Northwestern University analyzed 46 years worth of venture capital startup investments. And they found while not every failure leads to success, failure is a necessary step to everyone's success. So, so, so be begin seeing your failures from a different perspective. I want you to start seeing your failures from a different set of lens. Amen. I want you to see your failures. Can I make up a word? My big brother, Reverend Elliot would. So can I use one? Uh, see failures as flopportunities. Amen. I felt good saying that. That's right. Amen. Amen. When you flop, see it as an opportunity, a flop opportunity. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Somebody say Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey was fired as a news anchor at the age of 23. I'd like to see that gentleman and compare his net worth to hers. 2.8 billion right now. But she was fired. Uh, Michael Jordan, anybody remember him? <clears throat> I know after watching the Bulls game the other night, you longed for him. <clears throat> Michael Jordan was cut from his high school team. I'm serious, cut. Hey man, that coach, I'm telling you, where is he now? I know where Michael is. Michael has a net worth of $3 billion. Amen. And owned the NBA team for several years. But he was cut by his high school coach. Elvis Presley. Y'all remember him? That jailhouse rock fella. Amen. Elvis Presley. He was fired from Grand Ole Opryland. And was told you'd be better off getting a truck driving job. <clears throat> I need to tell you, brothers and sisters, you got to know how to handle the F word or when the F bomb falls in your life. There's some biblical strategies I want to share with you that will help you transform failures into something that benefits you. Anybody need a blessing this morning? Amen. Anybody came here today want to leave better? This is going to help you today. In this story, Peter has had a failure. He's worked. He worked all night. You heard me read it. He worked all night and failed to catch anything. And when morning came, he gave up on success. He had washed his nets and said, we're done. I, I, no doubt, you know, he has, he has business partners there. The original J&J &J Fishery, James and John. Come on, talk to me somebody. And, 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 but they were resigned. He was resigned to his fate. But I need to tell you, anyone can have a tough day at work. Somebody say anyone. <laughs> anyone can have a tough time in your marriage, a tough time on the job, a tough time in the community. Anyone can wrestle with disappointments that comes when a deal is lost and the contract falls through. What do you do when these things happen? And when they happen so often. Well, this night could have been a fluke. We don't know. I haven't, did re I've done, haven't done research on his business. That part I didn't do much study on. It, it, but it had to be discouraging for Peter to give his best effort to a task. And have nothing to show for it. What do we do with these moments in our lives, these seasons, these losing seasons, these emotional feelings uh, that result from them? <clears throat> uh, uh, it, it says, first of all, if you look at verse 2 and 3, I just read it. Uh, the text says that Jesus saw Peter's boat and got into it. <clears throat> Amen. The text does not say he asked Peter for permission. 
He just got in. <clears throat> Let, let's start off by telling you that, number one, I want to give you some strategies right from the Bible. Amen. This didn't come from a self-help book. It comes from the book. Amen. That, that Jesus authors. Amen. That he has given his, his um, uh, anointing to. His, he has given it to us to live by. Here's the first point. Let Jesus get into your boat. Amen. I thought we'd be running. We don't know when to shout. Amen. We let so many other people get in our boats. Amen. That car boat, that house boat, that bed boat. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. We let too many people get in our boat. Let Jesus get in your boat. Now, there's a lot of symbolism associated with this boat. First of all, this is not just an ordinary boat. This, 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 this message, when I say get on your boat i'm not talking about a water traveling vehicle i i'm i, I mean it, 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 there's a lot of symbolism here it represents a lot more in peter's life number one it represented his livelihood yeah. amen because he had been out there amen <laughs> and he had been fishing with his team all night didn't catch anything <clears throat> it's bad enough to go to work for yourself Amen. And you stay there all day and can't make no money. But when you are an entrepreneur and the company don't make no money and everybody else is looking to get paid. <laughs> I wish I had an entrepreneur that know where I'm coming from. <clears throat> Amen. So there was some, there was some uh, real pain here. There, there was a, some financial failure here and there was a professional failure here because he is a fisherman by trade. <clears throat> Amen. He failed uh, because he, he, this was his area of expertise. This was his, his prowess. This was his expertise and his experience. Uh, he could easily have said, I'm not, I'm not new to it. I'm true to it. He, he could have bragged about this not being his first rodeo. Fishing is what he knew, but he failed. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Finally, the, the boat was part of his identity. Amen. Because that's why I call it a personal failure. Because his failure was tied to who he was. Peter, the fisherman, failed on that day. And you do know our occupation, amen, whether we like it or not, is a great part of our identity amen some people no matter how much we uh sing and get into worship and all that kind of stuff uh mr jeffrey and 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 and, and miss o your students are going to just see you as the teacher i went to church with my teacher today our identity amen i, I remember in my first couple years of marriage amen going to my wife's christmas party at General Motors. Amen. I just felt something. Yeah, I, I remember going there feeling some kind of way. Because I'm young, I'm young. I'm, I'm 23, 24 years old, and, and I'm sitting around there with all these accomplished people. And, and, and to me, it seemed like they were, they were bragging about their accomplishments. And it may not have been the case. It could have been just me. But they, they were talking about their jobs. I remember one of the white guys, one of the Italian guys said, yeah, so, Frank, what do you do? Oh, I have a, a I'm a chemist at a, a, a Quaker Oats, and that's what I do. And what do you do, uh, John? Well, um, I am the executive uh, manager for a corporation in the suburbs. And they go around and ask the other guy, what, what, you, you, so you work for General Motors? Yes, I'm an upper manager, man. I've been here 20 years. And then it seemed like they nose were, they start talking through their nose and say, hey, Ira. So what do you do, buddy? <laughs> and of course, I was, uh, I, I, I walked in with Miss Acri, but I, 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 I you know, I, I knew that I couldn't compete with their finances, but I was a substitute teacher. But I didn't present it that way. I did like this, I'm an educator. That's what I do. I would say that, and I would hope that they would soon leave me alone. 
and not make me feel like a failure. Amen. I was just getting started. Come on, talk to me sometime. Amen. Peter failed in three areas, professionally, financially, and then personally. He felt bad. But, but, but even though he felt bad, amen, it, it's imperative, amen, that we learn some lessons from him. He welcomed Jesus on the boat. Amen. Tell your name, welcome Jesus on the boat of your life. We, we must welcome his person, his passion, his precepts, his principles. We must welcome them. Amen. Let him into your boat. And then we got to, here's the second step. You ready for the second step? Amen. Uh, uh, are you ready for the second step? Are you ready for the second step? Okay, here it is. Let Jesus dictate your next steps. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not making this up. I'm, 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 I'm not doing that today. Listen, it says, verse number four, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Are y'all hearing me today? Master, we worked all day and all night and haven't caught nothing. You know who's talking, don't you? Peter! What, what do y'all know about Peter? Number one, he, he was like another preacher I know, not me. He was a cussing preacher. Yeah, Peter would cuss. Any Bible reads, remember that? Okay, Peter, Peter, uh, he, he also would fight. But I like a guy like Peter because he was protecting Jesus. Somebody was trying to, trying to pull up on Jesus and, and, and Peter pulled out his piece. And cut the guy's ear off. Anybody remember that? Wave, wave your hand if you remember that. So don't y'all sit up here and act like Peter was some saint. God just used him. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> yes, brothers and sisters, uh, we also see uh, that Peter, he, 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 he said, Lord... Uh, it, it, it's been a long night. We've been out here. And uh, I, I could see him in my own imagination saying, I'm hungry. I'm tired. And I could see, because since Peter was outspoken, I know he was probably saying, and in case you smell somebody, it might be me. I've been out here all day, and I'm already mad. But because you said so, woo. I will let down the nets. So Peter clearly slightly pushed back initially, but he obeyed. Far too many of us have tried to do life our own way. But let's be honest, I know after Peter went through this, you can, I could relate to Peter. I, I, you, know, I don't, I don't, you know, I would never cuss like Peter. That's not me. Amen. Look this way. Look this way. Amen. But, 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 but I could relate to, to Peter feeling bombed. He had been flustered and flabbergasted. He had to be drained, discouraged, and disappointed. But, but, but Peter's fatigue, his frustration, and his failure didn't allow him to shut out the voice of Jesus. Can I tell you something? I, I, I want you to pause. I, I'm going to stay here for a second if I don't get to the rest of this stuff. I want to tell you, never allow your mood to dictate your movement. Who is that for? Amen, amen, amen. Don't be a prisoner of your emotions. Successful people practice the habit of pushing past their emotions. Amen. I, I, I remember early on I, in ministry, I don't know if I do it now, I may, I may and I may not, but, uh, but I remember uh, 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 several years ago, uh, I, I, was, I had the, the shakes, what they call that? I, I, you know, I was cold and I was hot, and then I was hot again and I was cold and hot. no, it wasn't no hot flashes, amen. <laughs> I almost said something. I had the chills. Amen. And, and, and I got received a call. Um, a member wanted me to go to the hospital to see somebody who was not even connected to the church. 
and, uh, and I had to push past my emotions. I couldn't drive because I was aching. Deacon Toby Gross was a deacon at our church then. I called him. He's around the corner. I said, can you come get me? Because I know if I don't go, they will never forget it. He came and drove me to the hospital. And since then, that person didn't even go to church. But nevertheless, I had to push past my emotion. Look at somebody and say, that's life. <laughs> you got to push past your emotions. I need to tell you today, there is a danger in letting anyone on your boat during a crisis. You know, when you have a crisis, you, you can't afford to let anybody in your boat. Amen. Let me just say this. I was so inspired. Anybody, I, I didn't really, I didn't even watch the game, but I watched all of the, the, uh, the interviews afterwards. I was so inspired by the women's college coach. Coach Don Staley. Give her a big hand. Coach Don Staley. Coach Staley led the NCAA women's basketball to the championship. And she testified after her team won the college championship. She didn't care nothing about the cameras being rolled. And it looked like she said, give it praise to God, honor to my pastor. She said, I can't go any further. She said, a God allowed me to go back to the same place where I shed sad tears and I come back and we get an opportunity to shed happy tears Woo! isn't that something she said she, we won in a place where we previously lost in other words I got a chance to experience some joy in a place that I was previously hurt she said, it's only the God that I serve that can allow us to experience uncommon favor in the same place. Isn't that amazing for you to get blessed in the same place you were hurt? Can somebody scream today, Lord, I need a same place blessing. A blessing on that same job. A blessing in that same neighborhood. A blessing in the same church where you got your feelings hurt. The same place blessing. Life has a way of coming full circles. Yeah, yeah, when, 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 when you get through, some of us, hey man, I, I, I want to speak to some of you because some of you always think about, I got to leave, I got to run, I got to go here. You always looking at somebody else's marriage, talking about they doing so much better. My grandmother told us this a long time ago, I don't care how it glitters, don't nobody know what goes on in a house but the two people that live in it. Nobody. And some of you all, when y'all get through running, running from church to church, running from man to man, running from boo to boo, running from job to job, you're going to look back because the life comes full circle and you're going to find out once you had a few birthdays that you could have stayed where you were. And did a whole lot better. Reverend J.T. Ross was married four times, and his fourth wife, he was married to her 44 years. It hurt me when he said it, but he sure said it publicly. He said, if I would have known what I knew now, I could have stayed with my first wife. I know that's your uncle, but he said it. And he didn't mind saying it every way he went. The bottom line is, you've got to learn how to push through, and God can give you a same place blessing. In Mark chapter 5, he restored the demon-possessed man, and this man wanted to travel with the Lord. This man, he said, listen, I want to go with you. Man, you, you, you done came and turned my life upside down. You deprogrammed me from all these demonic spirits. I'm going with you. And some people thought that that would have been a good deal, and some people thought that he might as well go because it would give credibility to Jesus' message. Amen, that he's the savior of the world and he's, he's a miracle worker. 
And I, but Jesus said, no, nah, baby, brother, you go home. He said, you go back home to your old stumping ground. Hey, Amen. Your testimony has more value back home. It has more power back at your job where they know you. It has more power back in the neighborhood where you come from. It has more power. He said, because when we go on the road, these folk don't know you. Amen. But, but when you go back home and to your job and to your community, they will, they will know that you were towed up from the floor up. Your life was wrecked and, and, and I touched you with my finger of love divine and got you rolling all over again. You look at this particular passage, Jesus gave Peter some orders. And, you know, for a lot of seasoned fishermen, it would have been t difficult for him to follow Jesus' orders. You know what Jesus did for a living? Jesus, his expertise was carpentry. How you going to tell a fisherman about, car about fishing and you're a carpenter? I mean, it's just real talk now. Hey Amen. A lot of seasoned fishermen would have said, Wait, 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 Big J, I, I know you, you, we know who you are, but fisherman is my business. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it required tremendous humility for Peter to listen to Jesus' instruction. Because number one, Peter knew how to catch fish. Peter knew the methodology. Peter knew the proper bait. He, he knew the best time of day to go the best spots, but instead of arguing and dismissing Jesus altogether, he complied with Jesus' request. He said, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. But he said, but Lord, I'm taking you at your word. I don't know who I'm talking to today. This message is for a few of you. Amen. You need to realize that you are at a point in your life that you must obey God no matter what the cost. You may not understand it, but you have to get to the point where you say, Lord, I'm taking you at your word. You can't lose, amen, when you take God at his word. Listen to the voice of the master and let him speak into your failure. Before I give you the third step, let me just, just whisper. This. this ain't no step. I just want to tell you this. Amen. Put this in your knapsack. Hold on to it and be reminded that recovery is a process. So tell your neighbor, recovery is a process. Now, now find another neighbor that's not looking too mean. That was a mean, hey, hey, it's a process. Tell somebody else, recovery is a process. I'm trying to get you to find a nice neighbor this morning. <laughs> recovery is a process. Oh, yes, it is. You, you can't just flip the switch. You can't flip the switch. Unfortunately, that's how we're wired in this microwave era in which we live. We want everything done quick and in a hurry. Sometimes the blessing, the benefit, or the breakthrough comes quickly, but it usually takes time. Can you repeat after me? Because you just put it in the atmosphere because you need to remind yourself success yes. takes time. Uh, Y'all don't really believe that, do you? Hey, Amen. Many of us are looking for an overnight success. Even when you want your blessing to manifest, it takes time. It takes time for healing. It takes time to forgive. Somebody done you wrong, you don't just wake up tomorrow, oh, I forgive, praise the Lord. It takes time to forgive. It takes time to build a business. It takes time to grow. It takes time to push past that thing that was hard to get over. It takes time to really get to know each other in a marriage. You don't just wake up, amen, and just know people in six months, a year, two years. It takes time to know each other. Here's the third step. Let others help you. I mean, for real now. Amen. Let others help you. Amen. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, when people who are wiser than us give us some tips and some nuggets and share wisdom, we find out that we really don't want to be helped if they're not saying what we want to hear. Let me drop this. People who rebound from failure are those who embrace, pursue, and are open to receiving help from others look at somebody telling me heavy 
on the help from others. Amen. Amen. Stop acting like you know everything when you're trying to accomplish your goals and pursue your dreams. Look closely at Peter. He didn't wait for others to see his need. You know, I used to be like that. I'm glad I grew that. I'd be sitting back saying, Lord, I want somebody to see me out here and come and help me. No, he didn't wait for others to see his need. Amen. Verse number seven said, went, so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. In other words, he couldn't handle all of the prosperity, all of the success. I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, if you follow the precepts and the paradigm and the pattern of, of Jesus Christ, he'll take your failures to the place where your success is so incomprehensible, you won't be able to stand it. Yes, yes, but we got to put pride aside. Okay, don't tell your neighbor because this is for you. Say, say with me, I must... Put pride aside. Come on, clap those hands and just encourage yourself. Amen. I must put pride aside. Be proactive and reach out. And not, 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 not mind you, you're going to reach out to some people and they're going to have the wrong spirit. Amen. But don't allow that to stop you from pursuing your goal. Amen. God will touch the right hearts. Amen. Don't, don't, don't try to do life by yourself in a corner under a bush. Amen. Life, amen. There's no, I told you before, you've heard people preach it. You've heard people teach it. You've heard books written about it. You've heard so many sessions on this concept that there is no such thing as a long range of success story. Amen. You think of everybody that's successful, nobody did it alone. Nobody. Michael Jordan had Scotty. Shaquille O'Neal had Kobe. I mean, well, I ain't got to go that far. Long Ranger had Tonto. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. People who recover well from failure are those who realize they need help from others. And they don't want, they don't wait for other people to notice their needs. They reach out. They are proactive. They take initiative. Amen. Tell somebody, you better get this today. Amen. Because these are principles, if applied, that will revolutionize your life. Who am I talking to today? Who needs this today? Who needs, who's ready to go another step higher? If you come to a church and, and you say, well, I just come to give God some praise and to pay my offering, life is great. Amen. You can leave now. You should want to grow. You should want to glow. You should want to go to another level, to another dimension. <laughs> Number five, learn to receive the blessing God wants to give us. When you, uh, thank you, coach. Thank you, coach Staley. When you experience that uncommon favor, it sometimes can be overwhelming. It can be hard to know how to deal with what comes your way. Uh, I, I don't know what Peter's past looked like, but, but I get the sense that there was something that needed to be dealt with. But here's the shout. Whatever his past may have been, at this point in his life, it did not matter. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Somebody online, you may be in another city, but I need to tell you, it does not matter what your past is because God is he's dispersing some, some, some incomprehensible grace today. God's grace, don't y'all make me holler this morning. God's grace gives us a clean slate to move forward. <laughs> Oh, you ought to speak life to somebody. Tell somebody close to you, it's time to move forward. You've been stagnant too long. You've been running in place too long. It's time to go to another dimension. You can't keep on going through sixth grade and you're 16. You got to go to another stratosphere. Today, I come against that spirit of being stuck in a rut. I come against it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of being stuck in a rut, stuck in a routine. Oh, 
all because of some negativity from your past. It's time to shake that mess. It's time to shake that madness. It's time to get up and get after that blessing God has for you. I need 20 people this morning. It's got to, this message got to be, be for at least 20 people. I need 20 people to say, Lord, I hear you. Lord, I'm taking you at your word. Lord! Anyone who has ever done great things for God uh, came to the place at some point where they really realized it, that it really wasn't about them anyway. It really wasn't about them. God used them in spite of them. Can I talk to somebody here today? Hey Amen. Don't, don't you believe the hype when other people try to give the, 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 the impression that they are scot-free and sin-free and never done anything. I need to tell you, God told me to tell you, ain't no angels on the planet Earth. Somebody need to hear this. Hey Amen. It doesn't say, it doesn't say y'all have sinned. Romans 3 and 23 says, all have mercy, Lord, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Peter knew that he was a mess. But, 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 but the Lord said, the master has, has need of you. And he spoke a word to Peter, and Peter accepted his assignment. Oh, cussing Peter. Oh, fighting people. Peter. Oh, short-tempered Peter. Uh, he, after wrestling with his feelings of unworthiness, he went for it. He believed that if Jesus was calling him, he could follow where he was leading. Tell somebody it's time to go for it. Number five, let Jesus define your future. Amen. Don't let your failures define you. Let me tell you this. Failure is an event, not a person. I said again, failure is an event. It's not a person. That failure was something you did. That's not who you are. Don't you ever forget that. Amen. Learn to, to see your past obstacles as present opportunities. Did you hear what I just said? Don't you make me run around this building again. See your past obstacles as present opportunities. Amen. The shame I had to go through it. The embarrassment I had to go through it. Being broke I had to go through it. Being by myself I had to go through it. Being hurt I had to go through it because you were developing me for where you were getting ready to take me. My past obstacles prepared me for where you're getting ready to lead me. Can, can I get 15 people, amen, that's embracing this message and just start thanking God for those tears. Thanking God. I know it's hard. Thanking God for the shame. Thanking God for the pain. Because in the midst of the tears, in the midst of the pain, what about the lessons you got? Oh, glory to God. I got so many lessons. You got enough lessons you can write a book. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jay-Z. Can Jay-Z be a prophet for a minute? Jay-Z Jay said, a loss ain't a loss, it's a lesson. Appreciate the pain, it's a blessing. That's good preaching. Bill Clinton, the 42nd president of the United States, had some painful losses in his career. I heard him on an interview talking about his life. At the age of 78, I believe, he talks about being a young politician. He talks about in 1974, he lost his bid for Congress. He was humiliated. He was shamed. He felt awful, awful, but yet he recovered and became the governor of Arkansas. Arkansas's administration did not come without some frustration because the funny part about it is he lost in his bid to get reelected. Had to sit on the sideline four years to win back his office. Clinton believes that the losses prepared him for his successful presidential run. Sometimes you have to lose in order to win. I quote William Jefferson Clinton. He says, the defeat was good for me. He says, just like any other adversity in life, if you survive it, and come out of it, 
<laughs> he said, if you survive it, you, you normally come out ahead. Anyone here with I survived the testimony? Amen. Anybody got I survived the testimony? Because if you survive it, you're stronger. If you came through it, you're better. If you overcame it, you are wiser. I, I don't know who this message is particularly for, but there's someone who desperately needs to hear this. And you need to liberate yourself. Amen. This isn't your first or last time being in a jam. This is not your first or last time being stuck between a rock and a hard place. This is not your first or is it your last time of having your back up against the wall. This is not your first or last time coming into the church building, amen, with questions in your spirit and heaviness in your heart. But guess what? You're in good company. Amen. Because Peter was a good person to, to lift up today. Amen. Because Peter, if you look through the scripture, Peter, uh, we talk about this person did that house. Uh, David uh, 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 had a woman, had committed adultery. We could talk about how uh, 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 Moses killed a man and all, everybody's life is stained. But Peter was corrected and checked at least 13 times in scripture. Amen. The most popular one was when he denied, watch this, he denied Jesus and swore that he didn't know him. I mean, it's all right, you deny, but you had to throw a cuss word in there. He, he probably said it worse than this, but he, but he is a disciple of Jesus Christ, and they asked him, do you know him? And, 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 and he said, I don't know him. He could have even said, hell no, I don't know him. Get out of my way. The Bible tells us he cussed, but I believe he used worse words than that. He's, he swore that he, that's the one that he's known for in Scripture. How about this? How about this? How about this? They were trying to bring children to Jesus, and he was acting like one of them overprotective armor bearers. Not, 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 not like mine, but blocking the babies from Jesus. Jesus said, uh-uh, get back here. Suffer not the little children. Let them come to me. That was Peter and his guys. Can I talk to somebody here today? Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters. He also rejected Jesus' gesture to wash his feet. Y'all hear me today? Jesus said, I want to wash your feet. I can hear the music playing, you know, like the Ten Commandments. All spiritual and stuff. And I can see Jesus walking, you know, real slow toward Peter. And then Peter gets some righteous indignation. So he said, hey, hey. Doc, you ain't gonna wash my feet. No, no, Jesus, you ain't gonna wash my feet. You the son, you know, some people get off into all this old false humility, showing out. You the son of God, I ain't gonna let you wash my feet. Jesus said, Calm down, homie. Listen, if you don't let me wash your feet, you will not take part of me when I come into my kingdom. Peter said, Here's the soap, here's the water. He, let's, get, let's get busy. Let's go now. In the midst of all that, God had a plan. I'm almost done. God had a plan for Peter. Even Peter's denial could not derail the plan of God. Amen. The 44th president, those of you watching online, I got to brag sometimes. Some of you tuning in from Vegas and Tennessee. There's a guy that was the president of these yet-to-be United States. Came from the south side of Chicago. Uh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> And he said one time, you can't, for, I got to say, President Barack Hussein Obama, Obama, he said, you can't let your failures define you. He says, you have to let your failures teach you. You have to let them show you what to do differently next time. So who's receiving it right now? Who's receiving it? You know, you know brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You're going to make mistakes if you keep on living. But, 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 but let me tell you this. You ought to say, this issue won't come up again in my life. This failure won't reoccur. There will not be a rerun for this one. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Can I leave you? I got another one. Let, let your recovery from the F word help someone else. Sometimes the person who can help you the most in life is the one who's walked in your shoes. 
Amen. Amen. If you've been on drugs, I can pray for you, but find somebody who's been on drugs and overcame it. I'm not going to never try drugs. Amen. I wasn't going to try it even when I was 25 because I'd have been some of, like some of y'all. I probably would have liked it too. So I said, I ain't going to try it. Amen. But if I had ever tried it, I was going to go find somebody who overcame it. I would have hooked up with Jesse Coker. I would have hooked up with Abraham over back there who, who overcame and became a doctor. I, I, I would have I found somebody like my old classmate, Anthony Howry. Amen. He, he was on, uh, out there bad, just looking crazy. I had to throw that in, you know. I had to throw that in. <laughs> and the Lord turned him around. He's an entrepreneur. And he and Troy and a few others are going to get appointed to be deacon on the fourth Sunday, on first Sunday. Come on, God, turn it around. Peter was a man who was acquainted with grace. His life had his share of bloops and blunders, but everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly was preparing him for his assignment. Jesus knew that failures would be a part of Peter's discipleship. But with each failure... That would be refinement for who he was. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And I just told you how messed up Peter was. But the Lord told him, the Lord told him, Peter, you see all the fish you caught today? He said, well, congratulations. Now you're getting ready to become a fish of men. <laughs> By the power invested in me as the son of the living God, you are now officially called to preach. Go on out and save your current generation. Peter was a part of the big three. Peter, James, and John. That was Jesus' inner circle. Isn't it amazing out of all the preachers in Jerusalem on the day that the church was launched, the best person that could show up for the job was Peter? <laughs> and I know why. Amen. Because the Lord has to reach way down and get somebody who really understood grace. He had to go get somebody, amen, who really understood the love of God. If there was anyone who, who knew the good news of the gospel, it was Peter. I could hear, hear, hear the Lord saying, Peter, get ready. Uh, yeah, uh, I could hear him saying on his first sermon, I know someone who can turn your life around. I know someone who could give you a clean slate. I know someone who will love you unconditionally. Ain't God all right? I, 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 I know somebody that if you messed up your life, He'll give you unconditional love and get you back rolling again. I'm done this morning. Greater St. John, you don't have to stay in the shape you're in. Yes, you can turn your failures into success. Ain't God all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave here today walking by faith. Is there anyone here gonna walk on by faith? Is there anyone here that knows what faith can do? Leave here today. Send Lord. I'm trusting you to take me all the way. Can somebody say faith? Faith will see you through. Faith will move mountains. Faith will open the fountain. Faith will supply your every need. Faith will help you to succeed. Yeah! I'm sorry. This supposed to be a teaching message. But when I think about 
how he brought me through. When I think about how he made a way for me, uh, I can't help. If you're here today, 